you need two types of tape, masking and scotch tape. Masking tape for stainless braid and scotch tape for polyester braid. Uh, to cut the hose, you'll either want to use a saw or shears. For expanding, you'll need some type of lubricant, either WD-40 or silicone spray. Uh, an expander for what size hose you're using and a razor blade or a box cutter to trim the hose after it's been expanded. Stainless braid with masking tape. HTP hose does not need any type of tape. Recognizing the different braids. Polyester braid will have a blue tracer through it. You'll need to have scotch tape on this through the entire assembly process. HTP braid is more of a shiny plastic looking braid and you won't need any tape on it throughout the uh, assembly process. We cut the hose with a, a toothless blade here at Brown & Miller. Um, you can cut it various ways. You can cut it with shears. Um, the HTB braid and the polyester braid can even be cut with scissors. Expanding and trimming the hose. Grab the proper size expander you need for the hose you're using. Spray lubricant on it. Slide the crimp collar over before you expand it. It'll make it easier to install the crimp collar. And then screw the expander all the way into the hose. Make sure that you use all the threads. The only thing you really need to be careful here is that you hold the, sh the hose straight in your hand when you're screwing the expander in. Remove the expander and then trim the hose. An easy way to line the, the hose up to trim is to pull the crimp collar up to where it's flush with the end of the braid and use the crimp collar as a guide to trim the end of the hose off. Push the fitting in until you bottom out on the end of the Teflon hose and then slide the collar up until it hits the blue part of the fitting. Setting up the crimper. When you unpack your crimper, the first thing you want to do is remove the vent and install it. Installing the crimp die components. The base ring will always stay in the machine, but it won't come in the machine when you unpack it. You'll install that here. The next you'll see that we have two different rings for compressing the crimp dies. One is a full ring, which you'll use on everything except for 120 and 150 degree fittings. Next is the cutout die, which you'll use on those fittings where the nut will sit in there. And this part is the plunger. So you install the base, the crimp dies are going to sit on top of this. One thing that's important is to keep the machine lubricated. Um, rather than putting d grease on the dies all the time, we just recommend having a thin film of grease on the inside of the compression ring. Unpack your die for the proper size that you're going to crimp. 
install the die. For this example, we're going to crimp a 150 degree fitting. So we're going to install the dies, lower the hose down, get our cutout compression ring, slide it, the hose inside, slide the dies down. install the plunger. Now it's important when you install the plunger that you put it on there properly. If it's crooked, it'll do damage to the machine. For all other hoses or hose ends rather than 120s and 150s, you're going to use the full compression ring. It's important when you set the the fitting within the crimp dies that you crimp the entire crimp collar. It'll be difficult on straights because it's it's difficult to see. So as long as you don't crimp the nut, you're in good shape. For any bent fitting, you can set the uh, gold part of the crimp collar lower than the jaw dies, and it won't screw up the blue part of the fitting when you crimp it. So since on this, this setting we're crimping dash 12 stainless, you want to find dash 12 stainless, and then find the setting on, in this case, which is 3.3 and you're going to set the micrometer on the machine. Turn it down to 3.3. Once you have that set, push down on the switch, crimp the hose, and the micrometer will stop the machine from crimping any further. It'll lift the compression ring with a magnet off, pull both of those parts off the machine, remove the hose, and the next thing you're going to want to do is measure the crimp diameter. And on the same sheet that you had with calibration, it'll have the, the proper crimp diameter. In this case, I believe it's 984 to 988. So as long as you fall within those limits, everything will be fine.